You know, the devil doesn't mind quoting the scripture when he thinks it's to his advantage. And uh, we have recorded in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 6 that uh, the devil made a rough estimate, a mutilated quotation of Psalm 91 verse 11. He said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it's written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Well, the writer to the Hebrews, uh, he says in chapter 1, and of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So one of the roles the angels had was to watch over the Lord Jesus while he was here. But as the chapter goes on, Hebrews uh, chapter 1 verse 14 says that these angels Are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who shall inherit salvation? So while the angels looked upon their Lord, we read he was seen of angels, and the angels beheld the Lord in such remarkable ways in his humiliation. They were there always at the ready, and we see them ministering to the Lord Jesus after the devil leaves him, and we see them in other places, even at his resurrection and at his ascension. But to think that these same angels who ministered to the Lord Jesus, their Lord, while he was here, also have been sent to minister to us and care for us. And I often wonder if um, some of the dangers unseen, we didn't even know they passed us, and the angels were there to protect us in those situations. Uh, Years ago, I was traveling home from university, about an hour and a half drive, and I was hitchhiking. In those days, it was fairly common to do. And there was one little stretch of highway. It wasn't very long, a few miles long. But I had to take it in order to get to the main road that led home. And I was standing up there with my thumb in the air, and I waited almost an hour in the hot sun, waiting for a ride. And finally, this big meatpacking truck pulled up, and I noticed he was grinding the gears as he pulled up. I went up and climbed halfway into the cab. He reached over and opened the door and said something like, Come on in. And I realized this man was drunk. And I said, Oh, I'm sorry. I said, Where are you headed? He said, I'm going to Toronto. And I said, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going that way. (laughs) Well, of course, the road carried on to Toronto. The little pit I needed to travel on was also in the direction of Toronto, but then cut off to go down to the Niagara Peninsula. So I'm sure he thought I was mad because I was on that side of the road and that was the direction I was going, but I sure wasn't going to get in that truck. And I got out of the truck and he let off a string of O's and grinding of gears away he went. It took a long time to get a ride. I was waiting a very long time. Finally, a car pulled up, and I used to, as I was coming up to the back of the car, I'd look at the license plate and the dealership, if possible, to figure out what city this person was from, so I might have some sort of conversation. And when I got in the car, I saw he was from Cleveland, Ohio, and we began to travel along the road, and I said, I know some people in Cleveland. And he said, who? And I said, well, I, I know the Pyle family. He said, you mean the Huff Bakery Piles? I said, yes, I, I, I'm good friends with them. He was quite astounded that this uh, rather plain-looking college student would know this very well-to-do and well-known family in the city of Cleveland. Anybody else you know? I said, well, I know Dan Majeski. And he looked at me and he was like, you mean the concert master of the Cleveland Philharmonic? I said, yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> he was astounded. He said, how do you know these people? I said, well, we're all in the same family. Oh, you are? I said, yeah, the family of God. I began to share with him the gospel, and he was very attentive. As we came around uh, closer to home, probably about 30 miles from home, he said to me, look, I'm sorry I'm not going all the way to St. Catharines where you live. I was going to go that far, but I got delayed further up the road, and uh, I'm afraid I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it that far. I said, oh, what was the delay? He said, well, it was a big meatpacking truck, flipped over. And I realized this was the same vehicle. You know, when I got down off to that truck, I had some hard feelings toward the Lord. It was like, come on, Lord. I mean, I've been waiting a long time asking you, and like, what's the deal? 
Well, the deal was he was watching over me. There are a lot of times the Lord seems to say no or changes my plans, and I get frustrated by that, and I don't realize that the Lord is watching over me. He sent his angels to care for me, and he himself is watching over me. So when things seem to go awry, as in the case when my father missed a flight on a helicopter from LaGuardia to Newark, and then the helicopter crashed and all lives were lost on board. We might feel frustrated about certain things, but God has his hand on us for good. Let's trust our Father that he actually knows what he's doing. He has sent his angels to be ministering spirits, caring for those who will inherit ultimate salvation. Until we're taken out of this world, saved out of this world, he has sent his angels to care for us in the world. Let's trust him in those difficult times and say, my father, he knows best.